welcome to uh, everyone. Um, my name is Eva Seis, and I work as a communication manager at the Intercultural Dialogue Platform. I'm very happy to welcome you all uh, at uh, today's, during today's, oh, we have another, during today's um, panel on the nurturing power of arts and building resilience and identity um, in young people. Um, this is the third and final panel um, of the community project, which is a project that seeks to build community, uh, that seeks to boost uh, identity and resilience through arts and cultural uh, activities to grow um, self-confidence, to grow self-awareness and uh, to boost empowerment in young people um, and to tackle radical narratives and radicalization at large. Um, over the past year and a half, the community project through um, graffiti workshops, through cinema sessions, through digital animation workshops, through painting classes and a wide variety of other cultural and arts activities um, has tried to show that through beauty and arts, um, we can create more peaceful societies. Um, before I, um, we start with the, with the actual, actual session, I would like to introduce you all um, to the guest speakers of this panel. First, I would like to introduce you to Esther Ting. Um, she is uh, an artist, an art therapist, um, and currently discovering um, the art of farming as well, as many people during this uh, COVID pandemic. Um, she is from a Chinese Malaysian background, but has traveled um, a lot uh, also for work and through all of her travels, she has really experienced um, that art can be a universal language um, through which people can connect. Uh, I would like to introduce you to Haley Chang. Uh, she is from Taiwan origin and she's a US trained um, art therapist. Currently, she's working in the Brussels area as a teacher and an art therapist. She's working as a teacher at the British Junior um, Academy of Brussels. She uses um, art as her daily detox, she says, and she um, has also seen many of her clients blossom through the process of art making. Um, I would like to also um, mention Annabelle Bro. Uh, she could not be here today with us um, in real time. She is a, um, a, mu a musician, a uh, music therapist and a researcher and um, yeah, a lecturer um, in Montreal in Canada at Concord University where she is a, a lecturer of uh, music therapy Furthermore, she also um, um, works for um, um, the Landscape of Hope, which is um, an initiative um, of young people in Canada um, that also uh, are empowered through, the, through um, arts activities, although more online. Uh, she has uh, recorded her part of the presentation, so, so you will all be able to see her contribution. Then I would like you to uh, introduce you to Ferhat Goktepe. Uh, he is one of our very beloved IDP um, colleagues. Um, he's a researcher and associate professor. Uh, he got his PhD um, from um, Pauline University. Furthermore, um, he is um, uh, uh, expert in a wide variety of um, topics related to this, including counterterrorism, uh, violent uh, extremism, but also education is, a, is, an, is an important element. Um, he also worked for, um, um, for over two decades in Turkey. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and for the crime squad, uh, as well as for the United Nations, where he was working in a similar position. Lastly, we have uh, Radu, at least that's how we've call, called him lovingly for the last couple of months. Um, Radu is a student at the uh, Romanian University in Cluj-Napoca. He is a literature and lingu linguistics um, student. Um, he's also part of the International uh, Intercultural Dialogue Platform's Youth Advisory Board, where um, he is doing amazing contributions in guiding and advising the Intercultural Dialogue Platform um, with anything related to youth initiatives. Um, he's interested in human rights, LGBTIQ, uh, and intercultural dialogue, and um, we're very happy to have him and all of our other guest speakers today. Um, uh, I shouldn't miss anything. Um, I would like to say that this is an interactive panel, um, so you're more than um, free to ask questions in the chat box. Uh, as you will see, we'll also use a Mentimeter as a, an interactive platform. Um, so I hope that you have your phones close by already. Um, what I would like to mention is uh, make sure that you have your microphone muted uh, in case you're not speaking and just raise your hand the moment that you would like to speak so that um, it's, you can see it in the, in the box next to record or um, you can just raise raise your little emoji hand. Um, is there anything else? Yes, at the end of the, towards the end of this uh, panel, there will be a Q&A. Uh, so you can also save your questions for then uh, and ask them personally um, to the guest speakers. And um, lastly, at the very, very end of this panel discussion, there will be a, a survey. So we will send you the link um, when we get there. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> I missed a couple of slides there. So yes, um, to get to know each other a little bit better before the very, very start, um, of this panel, please get your phones out. Go to, this is, and this also counts for the people at home, feel free to join. Go to www.menti.com. And then, You can see on the top of the page, or you, here you can see a code, an eight number code. If you insert that, it will take you to a question. Um, one of four, we'll try to go through these um, thoroughly, but quickly. And the first question is, where are you joining us from? Yeah, I can see that we really have a, like a proper Romanian crowd from home, more private. Also people from Brussels, I'm not surprised. Okay, great. Next question, it will appear on your phone. What is your occupation? What do you do in daily life? Lots of students. 
obviously. Thank you, Radu. A human being, okay. That's that that's fair. Support kids to learn, art therapist. Okay. Why did you decide to join today's panel discussion? Mm. It sounded very interesting. I'm here to support a friend. I love that. Thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. Interesting topics of discussion, curiosity, I'm a psychologist. That's great. Art is one of my passions, learn and to share. Great. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're very excited to get to know you a little better and to um to share what we know last question what is your favorite way of self-expression this one is a little more personal but not less important Wow, that's impressive. I think there would have been something for everyone knowing the community project. Well, except for the dancing, perhaps. Activism, poetry. And laughing. <laughs> Thank you, for you for sharing those. All right, I would like to now give the word to the very first guest speaker of today, uh, to Esther, and she will um, talk a little bit more about how we can use art as a tool to connect to our intuition and to the world around us. Uh, Esther, I will stop sharing my screen and um, okay. you can share yours. This is so cool that the, the mentee is the first time we're using that. I, I really appreciate how it gathered all the information and kind of created in an amazing artistic way. All right. Um, the website. Yeah, yeah, because I think I will ask questions to the uh, participants in the bit, but then we will just use the Zoom typing in later and uh, I, will, I will see the answer from there. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, so actually what I'm going to do is um, there are three sessions. The first one is um, we're going to do some exercise together. So it's not a therapy session. It is self um, exploration through um, medium. So this is the first part. And second part, we're going to discuss like uh, what, what has happened within us and what has happened within the group and how did you feel with this exploration? And the third part is I'm going to talk more about how to uh, use nature or use other medium as um, a tools to um, promote healing and promote uh, nourishment and insights gaining. So these are three parts. So for the first part, I need all of you get a paper, like A4 is good, um, and a pen. So I give you 20 seconds to do that. And if you want to use more color, feel free. I mean, if you have an art journal and you can just take it out. Yeah. That's great. All right, I think every, the 20 seconds have passed. Ah, great. 
So uh, the next one minute, you just take your pen on the paper, go for a walk. Oh, use your left hand if you are right-handed. Use your another hand that you normally don't use and even close your eyes. And just take your pen going for a walk and scribble it for another minute. So just for fun. That's what my three years old boy like to do all the time, scribbling. <laughs> Don't worry, I mean, you don't need to share your artwork to the group. I mean, this is just for your personal uh, experiencing, experimenting with um, art as a tool. Right? So, adding more lines, more curve. Maybe you have done this before, but um, I think every time we can always find something new something insightful right <laughs> eva are you all right <laughs> you, you, you look i don't know like distracted oh it's okay okay <laughs> i was thinking like am i muted or what okay oh you still can hear me good so the next part so mine is something like that yeah, just like, yeah, good. So what we're going to do next is trying to find a form in this scribbling. A form means like it can be like a, uh, a round shape or it can be like, like a figure and you see a duck or a dinosaur or, or, a, or a, I don't know, a wheel like, um, animal, whatever. So just take 30 seconds to find one, one object or a form from this scribbling, what you have done. There's no right and wrong. Just for fun, just for experimenting. And then after you found it, try to highlight that with your pen a little bit more. If you if you need more if you need to ask question just unmute your serving ask question all right um, if it, if my instruction is not clear just uh, feel free to unmute yourself okay now uh, I have got my little form little figure and what I'd like you to do is do a free writing so we will have the next. Oops. Next one minute. Next one minute to free write. So you look at that figure, and then you ask yourself a question: What what does it talk about you? This little figure that you have highlighted, does it talk about your current mood or your current season of life, or or your fear or your wish, or or about what is in your mind at this moment? Just yeah, write for one minute. Okay, start. Just keep writing. If you are blocked, you just write, oh, I'm blocked. I don't know what should I write. But keep coming back to that figure and ask like, what does it talk about me? Right, 10 more seconds. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So it's a very like uh, intense and quick <laughs> exercise. Um, and I'm act actually, we don't have that many people. So if you don't mind that, can maybe I would like to have um, two, one or two volunteers to, to share how was the process for you and, and what have you learned about yourself? And you don't need to share everything. You just share the thing that you feel, you know, feel free, um, safe enough to share. Um, actually, actually, I'm quite curious. Um, um, you can just say no, uh, Ferat, because you are next to my screen. So I'm actually quite curious what, what, how was the process for you? If you don't want to share, it's okay. So I'm just going to anoint you first. And then the, the second one, you can uh, take your time to, to think if you want to volunteer to share. Yeah, do, you, uh, do you mind? Uh, I think I can manage it. I mean, I would like to share, but <laughs> yes, please. I, uh, yeah, I think I did. I no, I, I couldn't complete it. I, I'm sorry. I, I would like to share, but I couldn't complete it. Yeah. How was yeah? How was it like? Um, you didn't complete which part? The 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 free writing part. Uh yes, I think yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. you did find a figure. Uh yes. <laughs> All right. Know. At least I I think I found this. <laughs> I mean, you, you you don't you just you just say no if you don't want to answer my question. I mean, feel free. Can I? I'm just curious to to check. Can, like, can I see the figure that you have highlighted? Uh, it's 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 not something meaningful, but uh, it's it's like a card to me, and I would prefer not to show it. But yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so did you, but you did try to write something, but I did. Yeah, I yet. tried. Yeah, I tried, but <laughs> all right, that's good. Yeah, but but there was something, but you didn't have the time enough to really kind of get uh, it's, the meaning uh, from it. Yeah, I, I think I draw some a meaning from it. Yeah, you did. Okay, <laughs> my imagination. Yes. <laughs> Okay, that's good. And, and the whole process, how did you feel? Did you feel like you were being rushed? You were. Yeah. You will feel like oh, that was silly, or I mean, how did you feel about the whole? No, it was it was it was interesting. I never tried before. And yeah, I can say it was funny. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank sorry. You. Sorry. I'm just I just picked you because you were next to me, no, and I was, okay. I was just <laughs> too you. curious about. No, yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Very much. All right. Um, is there anyone that you you feel like sharing? I mean, don't feel obliged. I mean, I'm quite. <laughs> I can be quite too curious and yeah. I can share mine. Yeah, Haley, do it. Oh, Great, right. Haley, thank you. Yeah, so this is my, I don't know if you can see it because I yeah. can't see myself. Um, yeah. So I scribble and this is a figure I identify here, over here. That's lovely, yeah. And I wrote reaching out, dancing, flexible. <laughs> that, that's it, that's what I wrote. <laughs> Oh, the, the dance figure was really flexible and yeah, like, there's so, lots of space as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my drawing. So it, Eva, you were, you were raising up your hand, right? Like, did you want to share? You, you don't need to, not because you are moderator, you need to do I, all the job. I just wanted to say, if there's no one that wants to share, I can, I can show you mine, but uh, uh, it's okay. uh, we, very, we very abstract. All right, um, but we have two. Maybe you can do the next round of sharing if you really want to. Yeah, I mean we can continue. Okay, that's just the first part. Okay. So I can I can hear from. Uh, thanks, Eva, for uh, volunteering. By the way, we can. I, I will call you later. <laughs> thanks, Ferab and uh, Haley. Um, so what I hear from from Hera was it was it was something that is still shaping, right? Something is still. Um, meaningful and it's quite fun to do and and Haley was a very strong figure already like you know the kind of uh, great gracefully dancing and and so actually we just spent I don't know two two minutes or, or three minutes I, I didn't even give you music to meditate I didn't even like guide you for a visualization so what I wanted to say was just two three minutes scribbling free writing and yeah, finding 
something and actually we can find so many interesting information about ourselves and so many also not maybe not only information but many questions that we can ask about ourselves so the one we need to do the next is okay there's a figure and um that you have um, drawn out so next thing we are trying to imagine that little figure that you are drawing maybe it's you maybe it's not you yet try to imagine that figure what kind of surrounding um what kind of surrounding that he or she is so you can so that is the script paper of that scribble so you can draw the surrounding here like landscape like weather or what kind of season oh how, how does the surrounding look like so for this one uh, we can have like a relaxly <laughs> sorry i was a bit rushy to to prove that um actually if we can, if we are willing to look inside, there's always like interesting information. But this one we're going to take a little bit more time, which is um, five minutes. We're going to do a little bit elaborated drawing about the surrounding for this little figure. For, sorry for for those who are not um, not on screen. I'm I'm curious that uh, if. If you have a question, you can just type in, okay? Yeah, so five minutes, we just draw the surrounding. It can include the weather or the season, or just some simple, simple lines and curves. We got five minutes for this. Meditation often comes with the instructions. Okay. If you feel like writing, feel free. Just take this time and this space for yourself. To ask a question, how do these images relate to you at this moment?
Now you can look at your drawing, the surrounding, and the little figure that you have highlighted. So what are what what is the relationship between this setting, this surrounding, and this little figure? Or the I'm not maybe not little this figure. What is the relationship with the context and that object that you have highlighted? Is that is that nourishing relationship? Is is it or more like chaos or? How is the relationship between the setting and the objects itself? Right, um, we gently come back to this space. So I, I'd like you to quickly type in uh, how, how is this exercising for you? Like the time that we spent on um, discovering what was in this scribble and All right, I'm waiting you typing in the Zoom chat so you can. So the question is, how how is this for you, this whole process for you? Do you feel shocked by something that you have never discovered? Or um, do you feel like, ah, it's kind of empowering. That's something I really knew already. Oh, that's great. Uh -huh, relaxing. Oh, yeah, consolating, comforting, new, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, so this is something that um, help us to see how we can see ourselves as a, as, as not only as individual, but self as a context. And uh, also realizing actually we have the power and the resources to know how we can um, identify what is the problem and what is the answer. Yeah, your, your heart rate pick up a bit. So thank you for, um, yeah, for, for sharing and because we don't know each other that well, but at the same time, you guys are open to try new things. I really appreciate that. Um, so if you want to do more about these, um, this uh, exercise, what you can do is ask yourself a question. Okay, I'm going to share my screen quickly. I can. Uh... So the, for the further con contemplation, okay, that's the last part. Imagine a surrounding that support your growth and well-being. What needs to be included in this picture? so that you can feel safe and at ease and be you. And then put close to, just put close next to your bed. bed. So this is what I've done. And I do found like, it's super helpful to help me to stay focused for my intention. So this is like a quick, like show you like what has happened, you know artwork as transitional objects. So we are not only talking about ourselves, we're talking about this drawing and what is happening here. So observation as well. I think Helen might talk more about that. Um, yeah, 
before I end, I want to quickly talk about um, the use of medium. So I will show you the medium that I use sometimes for emotional regulations. Like we sometimes we need just need bigger people paper to to let go of the tension in our body. But sometimes we do need some kind of like more fluidity, watercolor. So if you are working with children or clients or with yourself, so you can try out with different technique and different characters of medium will give you different kind of release. And what I want to show you now, it's there's a technique that my friend used for the, the teenager. Okay, I'm going to put this down so you can see that. So this is pouring technique. So those um, children, they are addicted. So by using this pouring technique, they found, they, they like, it's also create a lot of anxiety in the beginning, but eventually they found like, actually it's okay to let go. And it's okay to know like what, to, to know like, I don't know what is next to, to know like it's okay. So this is the pouring technique. And the other one I want to share with you, it's something that it's very close to, um, close to my heart, which is uh, like nature as partner. So it's inspired by environmental art therapy and deep ecology and Gaia theory. So what I did is um, find nature objects. So nature is the medium as well. So it's not creating any trash. It's uh, it's really reciprocal as well to the nature and, and there's kind of deep connection. So what we do, because it's COVID time, so me and my um, friends or some new people, we just go to a forest and pick branches. Um, we organize those things that represent our inner landscape or, or our wishes, or we go and find a a treasure that represents like, oh, for instance, a shell that represents, I, I belong, you know, to a kind of message to remind ourselves. So this is something I also strongly encourage um, everyone to try out. Um, I think that's all for my, for my session. So thank you for- Thank you very much, Esther. Yeah, um, I'll stop sharing. That was super relaxing. Um, uh, yeah, um, I, th I think to be able to stick to the schedule, we'll have to move on to our next speaker, which is Haley. So, um, I'll give the floor to her, Haley. Um, uh, you can share your screen. I don't have to. Yes. Screen. Yeah, can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. I need to present. Yeah, you got it. Okay. So thank you for her. Thank you everyone for being here today. And thank you, Esther, for leading us uh, for this wonderful directive you, uh, you share with us. So, so my name is Haley. I'm an art therapist and educator based in Brussels. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, just before we started, there's a quick reminder that all the images that you are going to see later in this presentation are not meant to be shared because of the confidential, confidentiality reason. So please do not take a screenshot or take a picture of your screen. Um, so if you're curious about the directive I use or some particular image you're interested in, just feel free to contact me later. I'm more than happy to share my directive with you. Uh, Haley, yeah, I want to reiterate that this uh, oh, is it recorded? Streamed. Right. So um, it's going to be on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that. Okay, uh, we can talk about it later, I guess. Um, okay. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Thank you. Um, so. Let's take a moment to think about this question, but actually most of us just did because I wanted to ask, what was the last time you create something? 
I think most of us just create something with Esther together. Um, but before you, so we already created something, but before you answer that question, I, that I want to talk about what is art. So Britannica Online defines art as the use of skill and imagination in the creation of aesthetics objects environments or experiences that can be shared with others. Cool. And so, ooh, so by this definition, we can know that artistic expression and artistic creation have existed for almost as long as humankind. Art serves different functions and purpose. Um, it varies from how you arrange your picture frame, your living room to a doodle in a meeting. So you see, many people don't think they're creative, but we are constantly creating just not necessary in visual arts forms. It's our nature desire to create and to share. So in the field of art therapy, we encourage people to explore that part of themselves, which is to create. According to the really famous art therapy educator, Bruce Moon, Art creating is a natural way to ex experience self-exploration, self-expression, and self-revelation. But how, how can art making help us to connect it with our inner self? Forming identity is one of the most important developmental texts for us as a human being. It's low, it's complicated process. And Identity includes personal goals, beliefs, and motivation and social roles. And our identities are influenced by, for example, culture, our environment, our occupation, our family. So the German American psychologist, um, Eric Hassan, believes that identity is very important for our psychological functioning because it provides um, coherence to one's personality. So art making pro pro provides a space where people can express themselves in a non-threatening way. And sometimes it is really difficult to use words to share our stories, to, to tell our thoughts, to express our feelings. And I've seen so many clients use art to show different, different meanings in their lives. And, to also share their personal narratives. So, which is, so that's very important uh, process involved in to, like self-understanding. The image you're seeing right now is created by a client in a recovery center. He was asked to create um, a CD album cover to depict his recovery journey. As you see, um, each song represents different stages of his recovery journey. He created this narrative in his own way to tell the story to me, uh, the, the story that he experienced. So in our therapy space, we create this condition where clients can observe and unify her or his emotion states, which is contributes to psychological integration for having a strong identity. There are like example here you see on the screen of how my clients are in tune with their feelings through images, through art creating, and essentially is to be more mindful. Uh, and mindfulness is a skill that could be generalized to more thoughtful problem solving. Okay, so art creating allows clients to express rejected aspect of self to gain self-awareness and self-acceptance uh, uh, self and to create and recreate identity in this process. Of course, it doesn't happen in one session, like the image um, you see it uh, right now is by a client I used to work with. He initially, when I first met him, he presented himself to be a leader and a really strong caretaker in the group. And took over six months, I believe, to reach the point where he feels safe and supported 
by me and by the community we we're in. And to realize that this is okay as a person to be supported. So we'll see the, this, this um, our work. The second one is a mini canvas. It's a flower in a pot. And he told me that um, being supported by me, by his friends and his counselor is like this flower in the pot nurtured by the water and the sun. So it's also worth noting that actually resistance are common, uh, even in our therapy. Generally speaking, adolescents tend to engage in resistance that range from non-compliance to anger to over-compliance. According to Erickson, the psychologist, uh, adolescents suffering from identity division may be inclined to behave in a overly, overly compliant way due to their tendency to use defense to identification. And the greatest, uh, greatest challenge for us as therapists is that to, in this situation is to how to distinguish between like adolescence transference through identification and true progress in identity development. Um, also, our creating is not only helpful for our clients to gain insight, but also help us as our therapists to understand our roles in our therapy work. And we call it response art. So creating art helps me to build my professional identity I reflect myself in the process of creating and to understand transference and content transference with my clients. So I often sit down and ask myself, wait, what happened there? What happened in that session? So at the end of this presentation, I would like to introduce one of my favorite art directives, um, which is Mandela. And Mandela is, widely used in our therapy field. And Mandela means circle in Sanskrit. And it means more than just the circle you see, the shape, but it also contains the meaning, the idea of unity and wholeness. And whenever I feel like I don't know what to do or I feel overwhelmed, I always go back to Mandela. And it's really easy and simple to make a man Mandela. So what you do is find a circular object. I have this here. And simply just trace your object on a piece of paper. And then you have this circle as a base and you can create using whatever you have at home. You can create inside the circle. You can create something outside the circle. The example you see on the screen is my personal example. I use um, just um, some magazine I have around. And for me, I at that time, I didn't feel like I want to fill up the circle. So I just left it like this. And so you don't have to fill your circle. And once you finish, you can ask yourself two questions. How does the artwork make you feel when you look at it? And how did you feel when you were creating the artwork? So thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And does anyone have questions for me? I don't know if uh, Stefania uh, by accident raised her, um, her hand previously, um, but otherwise we can um, she can ask you the question during the Q&A session. Yeah. Okay. Okay, in that case, we'll, um, we'll go on to the next presentation, which is actually, thank you so much, Hayley. Um, I think um, sometimes it's difficult for civil society workers, especially also in the field of radicalization to understand the potential of art um, and especially linking it through um, building identity. Um, and so thank you for your for making that very clear during your presentation. Um, I will 
share my screen. This is the presentation um, from, excuse me, oh, that's fine. Um, this is the presentation from Annabelle Bro, and she will talk about um, the collective, which is called Landscape of Hope. Hi, everyone. My name can everyone hear that? Yeah, great. Thank My name you. is Annabelle Brot and I'm a music therapy lecturer and an artist member of the Center for the Study of Learning and Performance at Concordia University in Montreal, Canada. I am pleased to be part of this panel presentation on the nurturing power of arts to discuss the work that we've been doing as part of the project Landscape of Hope. I apologize for not being able to be with you in real time, and I hope that this short video presentation may complement the discussions that will emerge as a result of this important panel. And so Landscape of Hope is an interdisciplinary collective that uses arts-based processes to magnify youth narratives of resilience against racism, discrimination, prejudice, and cyberbullying. This youth-led initiative aims to promote wellness, pro-social behaviors, and moral engagement in online environments using digital sampling as its primary method of intervention. Through collectively selecting, discussing, and remixing different pieces of contemporary media, difficult themes linked to cyber violence and identity formation are addressed. The media used vary uh, from musical or visual inspirations to recorded or downloaded media, as well as different forms of personal narrative or self-expression. These media are collected in different ways, including uh, through the plural app developed by Project Someone, a collaborating organization that works to build awareness, create spaces for pluralistic dialogues and combat discrimination and online hate. This application is available for free download uh, for both Apple and Android devices if you want to check it out. And so in this project, sampling is a critical means of using new technology to develop multifaceted articulations of community, identity, and ways of working with and through complex topics such as hate and hope and the continuum of emotions that may reside within that spectrum. I want to share with you the symbolism behind the logo of the collective. So I'm going to share this with you now. So the Landscape of Hope logo was created by David Hall, one of our collaborators. And it's a take on the universal symbol of Wi-Fi. The two hand-drawn lines and ink splat for the traditional circle represent artistic creation and the project's ethos of using art and the creation of art amongst young people to help counter online harassment, bullying, and hate. The barbed wire line represents this online hate. However, the two hand-drawn bars safely protect the user. So art protects us and creates a safe space from online bullying. The shape of the overall logo starting at the bo bottom gradually expands and gets bigger. Not only does this respect the original symbol and its meaning for Wi-Fi signal spreading outwards, but it represents also the ripple effect of one's actions, behaviors, and languages online. They can often start small and grow exponentially. Ultimately, this logo is a fusion of mobility, online presence, creativity, and protection. So I thought it would be interesting to share this symbolism with you. Similarly, I would like to take a moment to discuss the genesis, uh, the genesis sorry, of this project, how it all began. And so Landscape of Hope was born uh, of its sister multimedia project called Landscape of Hate, which was co-founded by Dr. Vivek Venkatesh and Dr. Owen Schaffman in 2017, and of which I have been a collaborator since 2019. The idea behind Landscape of Hate was to create a provocative multimedia platform to engage with the public on how issues of hate are discussed and debated in modern society. While this project 
had lots of success, the co-founders wanted it to be more community oriented, more public oriented, in the sense that they wanted to find a way for the public to contribute to the media that were being remixed and presented to a public audience. So Landscape of Hope really was born out of this desire to turn the platform uh, that members were so privileged to have occupied as researchers, creators, and cultural scene members. So we need to turn over this platform to vulnerable and marginalized populations. And the idea therefore became, how can we work with populations who are being minoritized in magnifying their own narratives of resilience? And so as a living collaborative project, Landscape of Hope has been bringing together diverse voices, working with varied minoritized group since its inception. And before we go further, I would like to share with you an excerpt from a recent research creation residency featuring a youth-led improvised soundscape and landscape art installation as a means of giving voice to participants and collaborators involved in this project. I'm hoping that this recording may also help to make more tangible some of the concepts and techniques I've been presenting thus far.
Et là, je m'en tape pour là. Take a moment to acknowledge the performers that you have witnessed in this artistic creation recording. Nick Forrest, Lou Raskin, Eva Roy, Michel Poulain, Marie-Lou Lyonnais, Dr. Victor Venketash, Dr. Owen Chapman, Dr. Martin Lalonde, and myself. So this residency was held in October 2020, following all COVID-19 protocols in place in Montreal at the time of recording. It was a particularly potent time for us to meet and engage in artistic creation. Amongst the rising racial tensions in the United States, the recent death of Joyce Iquokan in Quebec, and the rising hate crimes towards Asian communities members worldwide, issues of systemic racism and discrimination inhibited our discussions, uh, leading us to reflect upon how we may develop our ability to listen deeply, particularly in instances where there might be conflicting messages or opinions. In our artistic explorations, multiple layers of sounds, images, and words were used to explore this noise that occupies the public spaces, particularly the public digital space. These complex ideas can be hard to explore with words, particularly when the contextual meaning of the words are constantly evolving. Yet through this active process of creating through deep listening, we found a way to make meaning together. And for that moment to feel more resilient in the face of the suffering we were witnessing and experiencing collectively at varying levels. I think it's safe to say that we, uh, it was a profound experience for all of us. And it is my hope that this performance excerpt that I have presented has helped to exemplify important ways in which this project uh, may harness the nurturing power of the arts. And so to conclude, I would like to take a moment to thank the organizing committee for this invitation to speak, Concordia University and the Office of Research, Catherine Urbaniak, our program manager at Project Someone, all of our participants and collaborators, and Nikita, Nikita Hanna Korea for the videography of the performance that you've seen in this presentation. Please do not hesitate to reach out should you have any questions relating to what I've shared today. It will be my pleasure to connect with you. Thank you. Uh, so um, this was Annabelle, um, her video contribution. Um, indeed, she mentioned that should anyone have specific questions um, uh, they could ask me or and reach out through me to to her. Um, so um, yeah, unfortunately she couldn't be here to answer your questions um, in real time. Um, now I would like to give the floor uh, to Ferhat. Ferhat, are you ready? Uh, yes, I am. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, it's, it's okay. great. It's perfect. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> after these interesting uh, and very great presentations, I will try to keep mine uh, interesting and not boring. Uh, I'll do my best. And uh, today I will, in my presentation, I will give brief definitions, only brief definitions and insight of radicalism, radicalization and prevention. Uh, and I will mostly focus on the power of art in building identity and resilience against radical narratives and radicalization, which uh, are two important factors uh, against radicalization uh, process. And uh, just before, as a brief definition, radicalism is defined as a deviation from the mainstream uh, political or religious thinking. And radicalization uh, is a process in which individuals or groups deviate from moderate mainstream beliefs and may adopt extreme views. Radicalization, radicalization is defined as a set of 
complex causal processes in which multiple factors work together and to produce extremist outcomes. Not only one, two, but there are multiple factors we should be careful about and leading to the acceptance of terrorist ide ideologies as true and the violent activities resulting from them. However, while radicalization sometimes leads to violence, it cannot be equated with terrorism always. Some radicals are not violent or dangerous and only want to address what they view as societal ills. That is only their purpose. An individual with radical ideas may have no desire to force others to accept his own views and use violence. And they may never engage in violence. It is important to know this, uh, this difference to approach them, how to approach them. Because understanding how and why individuals become radicalized is crucial and can be used to better understand how to prevent and counter radicalization and develop, of course, more effective strategies. The radicalization process is very complicated and uh, because a certain level of reason is not always associated with a certain level of outcome. They differ. It is dr driven by underlying ide ideological, religious, psychological, emotional, economic, group-based motivational factors. And it is not easy to model because we are talking about a human. And uh, push factors refer to disadvantageous characteristics in the environment that lead a person to radical narratives, such as unemployment, poverty, parental incarceration, uh, physical or sexual abuse and neglect. And alternatively, pull factors refer to the group's characteristics that a person finds attractive, such as social identity, expectation of sometimes making money, belonging. And in terms of exit, push and pull factors also function relatively the same as an entry. The only thing that changes is the direction of the individual's path, individual's thinking. Instead of being pushed into radical narratives, the individual's acceptance now drives them away from the movement. The entrance is because of his or her belief and the exit also because of the belief, just the different way. And I want to give just short examples to highlight the role of so, uh, the importance of the socialization uh, in radicalization process. For example, ISIS set up a tea house, just a tea house in Adiyamastu of Turkey to serve as a hub where ISIS members could make the initial contact. And according to the reports, around 50 people visited this tea house every day. And by 2015, it had facilitated the recruitment of around 300 members just by the tea house. And similarly, Al-Qaeda also organized picnics to motivate prospective recruits and new members, and they were successful. Many left and right wing terrorist organizations, hate groups, they use various public places to, to make initial contacts and identify potential candidates for recruitment, such as art centers, youth centers, uh, musical instrument courses, immigration centers, cafes, bookstores, and many of them. And like terrorist activities, prevention and countermeasures also send a message to both the terrorists and the public. The fight against terrorism, radicalization, extremism, whatever you call, they are as much a form of communication as terrorism itself. It is the communication, the way of the communication. Children and young people are particularly susceptible, vulnerable to radicalization. Many young people seek answers to questions about identity, faith, belonging, and seek, enter, seek adventure and enthusiasm. Radical groups promise answers and a sense of identity to vulnerable teenagers. Uh, therefore, it is vital to help young people develop resilience to harmful influencers and enable our audience to build self-confidence, self-worth, and critical thinking. Breaking the spread of radical views through creative activities to protect students from radicalizing influences is an essential part of our protection role in which I believe you already do an invaluable job. And a review exploring the effects of participating in creative activities found that increased self-esteem, sense of achievement, empowerment, social skills, encouraging social engagement are some of the commonly reported benefits of participating in such activities. 
these characteristics have been linked to resilience, which is very important to fight with radicalization, the radicalization process. Res resilience is defined as the ability to adapt and cope successfully despite threatening or challenging situations. Intrinsic resilience factors are kept within the individual and include the need to feel a sense of belonging, feel secure, self-efficiency, self-esteem. And extrinsic factors depend on others and include having a secure attachment and relationship, access to broader support from family and friends, and positive school and society experiences, which we can all give these with arts activities. And related research has found that participating in art activities affects some intrinsic and extrinsic components of resilience, which is very important. Participation in art programs has been associated with positive youth development, such as the development of social skills and positive changes in behavior, social and emotional development, decrease in emotional problems, and promotion of social development and well-being. Arts can play a role in identity development, of course, and participants in the youth arts program associated identity with a sense of belonging through the opportunity to discover and learn about themselves, meet different like-minded people and experiences. Another study asked participants to what extent they felt they were part of a drum band at the end of a 10-week program, drum band. 89% strongly agree and agree that they feel they are part of the group. And 92% strongly agree and agree that they enjoy being part of the group. It is also suggested that the main ways that art activities may contribute to resilience are to encourage individual expression and strengthen social connections and to increase a sense of mastery and control, which we mentioned at the beginning as a reasons of radicalization and the radicalization process. The increased self-confidence, self-esteem arose from feeling valued, being treated like an adult, overcoming challenges and having a purpose. Additionally, another research found that participating in art activities most significantly provides a sense of meaning and purpose in life. The drama-based project participants stated that the event helped build trust and reciprocity among the group, thus helping to develop more positive relationships. This also extended to establishing closer relationships with family members, which is another important factor uh, to fight in, in a fight against radicalization and radicalization process. It is also essential to recognize that the experience of participants in such programs is not always positive. This is one of the most important points uh, we should be careful about. I mean, uh, arts activities, of course, perfect, but there are still some points, some points and some uh, concerns we should be careful about during these activities because uh, one study reported that some participants felt excluded by a larger group. Moreover, some participants in another study reported disapproval and teasing from some of their peers. So this is uh, one of the concerns we should be careful about during these activities. And since we are dealing with human, there is no one size fits all approach, of course, and policies regarding methods and participants should be decided upon and adjusted locally, according to the community. And prevention activities are always cheaper, safer, and need fewer resources. So we should, uh, we should spend more energy on prevention activities. Participating in arts activities can help pupils gain confidence, pursue their own thoughts, and express themselves without fear of being wrong. This can be a powerful way to build confidence, resilience, and character, which will help them a lot to, to fight against radical, radical narratives. And they learn to resist the different reviews their work may receive. This is another important aspect better manage rejection and acknowledge that is normal for not everyone to like their art, for not everyone to like what they are doing. 
it is it is also important to be open to different negative views of their work. Art gives them a chance to create something about themselves that is not related to their image, but instead focuses on their creativity and ideas. These activities can also give pupils who are not always uh, at the top academically the chance to increase their self-confidence and build resilience in other ways, in other fields like arts, sports, and arts provides teaching materials to empower teachers to overcome some of the difficulties of talking with uh, misinformed or upset students uh, about sensitive topics such as radicalization, religious extremism. And uh, it is also important using different art activities, not one, but different various art activities and allowing them to participate in their own choice among various activities can be important uh, when developing projects because uh, being present does not indicate interest or participation in the activity. Yes, and uh, I just want to finish my presentation with a Chinese proverb. Uh, Tell me and I will forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. It is, uh, I believe, very crucial to involve uh, our target audience in arts activities to build identity and resilience against radical narratives and radicalization and to help them to fight against the radical radicalization process. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Ferhat. Um, I'm sure that um, there will be uh, some questions. Uh, I'm sure that this raised some um, questions. Do you mind if we carry that on to the Q&A section? After Radu's... Mm -hmm. uh, sure, sure. After... Yeah, sure. Yeah, is that okay? Sure, so sure. Uh, uh, guys, hang on, hang on to your <laughs> questions. Um, we, just to stay in, um, uh, in schedule, um, we are moving on to the um, last, but certainly not least, uh, presentation of today's panel, and then we'll go to the Q&A. Thank you very much, Farhad, that was super informative. Um, and even though we Thank work you, together you. daily, that really gave me some new info. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Radu, are you ready? Yes, of course. I will be sharing my screen right now. I hope you're Great. still here and um, participating. Okay, just tell me if you see it. Is it okay? Yeah. All good. You're set. Perfect. Okay, so thank you, Eva. Um, and uh, it's an honor to be here. And I'm grateful that you have all come to listen to our um, perspectives, our Yes. OK, so let's begin with a very general question, which is uh, why is literature important? Right. Um, of course, this could be an endless conversation on its own, but I will try to focus on the things I personally find more relevant for the context of our gathering today. Um, I think in general, when one thinks of literature, several opinions uh, come to mind. Uh, such as it's a getaway, it's relaxing, it's but not, which are all obviously completely valid perspectives. Um, but today I will be tackling uh, literature from a different angle than it just being a recreational device. Uh, namely, I would actually like to focus on the social aspect of it. Uh, I think in general, literature is underestimated and even overlooked when it comes to world history. People don't seem to be that aware of the weight that uh, literature contributed with in many pivotal points in history. Um, so literature essentially nurtures uh, in the theme of today's panel, um, the sentiment of multiculturalism and the need for individuality. And if I were to take it even further uh, beyond these humanist directions, uh, what literature excels in is fostering ideas. Ideas that may in times of crisis turn into hope. And what is hope, if not this product of the relentless spirit of humanity that refuses to be broken? So let's just think of how many works of literature have been banned during wars. Um, how much textualized hope, right? 
um, has been burnt. The first lesson of literature is that people survive. Um, and the second uh, is that bravery comes in many, many forms. So we know that even in times of war and propaganda, literature persisted not only materially, but also in the form of a web that connects people, a network that refuses to be conquered uh, by any government or ideology. Um, so it is in a way also the merit of literature and its unerasable aura that the spirit of freedom and justice prevailed. Literature, um, which was often deemed illegal during those times, uh, was the one thing that, keep, that kept people going uh, under the bleak oppressive regimes, um, such as Soviet communism, for example. Um, not only did literature keep these people going, but it also reminded them that no leader rules forever. And as long as they may live, nobody can censor their thoughts. Um, so simply put, in times of crisis, literature anchors people to their identity and helps maintain ethical values. Um, on a lighter note though, literature also helps create this greater sense of community, right? Um, so be it religious manuscripts, such as the Quran, the Bible, or just biographical literature and works of fiction, literature has always brought people together. So when you read a book, right, you align yourself with a community of people that come in contact with the same experiences, the same struggles, um, the same strifes. So it is essentially the same experience that you get to share with millions of other people, a shared perspective of the world, isn't it? And um, this gives us access to such a huge um, range of ideas, uh, perspectives and events that span over years, decades, even millennia. Um, because literature, um, yeah, literature makes us citizens of the world because it evades time shackles um, and it constantly permeates humanist ideas. Uh, we get to learn from all these people's mistakes, uh, we hone our empathy to relate to individuals with lives tremendously uh, different to ours. And there was this idea, um, I don't know who, who coined it now, it's just my mind, but uh, the point was it might help to think of literary works as the reincarnation of their authors. Um, so literature is blood turned into ink, um, as T.S. Eliot here famously declared. Uh, right, so perhaps even more significant um, is the way in which literature triggers the process of discovering yourself. So for example, the protagonist does something that you would never agree with. Uh, now that piece of information, that emotional discovery uh, is subconsciously added to the intricate canvas that your identity is. Uh, you think to yourself, oh, come on, I'd never do that, for example. Um, so literature definitely helps narrow down the avenues of your identity, ranging from ethical matters, so the pillars of our identity and the things that we believe in, uh, to leisure activities and um, personal preferences. Um, and now I'll just stop screen sharing to have a more personal conversation, um, right? Uh, and now another thought-provoking question for you. Um, so if reading literature enables self-discovery and helps connect people all around the world, could increasingly lower numbers of readers mean a whole new community of people missing out on bits and pieces of who they are or who they could be, nonetheless? Um, so considering what we've already discussed up to this point, wouldn't it be safe to assume uh, that people are becoming more disconnected than ever from one another. Obviously, the rise of social media and technology uh, does enable great communication means, but literature implies a bit more than just communication, doesn't it? Um, it is regulated communication. Um, it hones our tolerance, which is um, yeah, vital in the context of uh, the social climate today. So now, as a young person, uh, this is my contribution as a as advisory board representative. Um, I think it would, it would have taken double the amount of time to discover myself if it weren't for literature. Um, it really is a great time saver in that regard. 
because the more you read, um, the more experiences and indirect memories you absorb. And that helps in so many ways, such as being able to put myself in other people's shoes or even to understand that we work differently uh, and that difference should constitute no ground to pin people against one another. And all of this, uh, which is amazing, uh, literally lies right beneath our noses. Um, it can even be said that it is a free, lifelong personal development course, if you will. Um, because literature essentially encapsulates the greatest ideas of mankind, and we really shouldn't be missing out, I think. Of course, I am a student of literature, um, so it makes sense that I would be saying these things. Uh, but above that, I am a young person and a citizen of uh, an increasingly restless world. Um, and I have seen firsthand how literature um, offers helpful shortcuts uh, into discussing matters very relevant today. And this, for example, just by attending IDP zone uh, book sessions, uh, that was very obvious to me. Um, literature involves a conversation first and foremost with yourself. Um, so what um, has just been discussed with the, with the previous presentation, it involves you um, rather than other people. Um, it is one of the most non-confrontational ways to break uh, barriers between communities. And what is, I think, the most important, it provides us with a way of educating youth without necessarily making them feel like they're being educated. And now on a closing note, uh, let us also not forget that we what we now call the golden ages of mankind, uh, so times of peace, harmony, and stability, coincide with eras in which art was deeply encouraged and respected. Um, so that's food for thought in my opinion. Yeah, that was all for now. Uh, if you have any questions or inquiries, feel free to let me know. And I will try to devise an answer um, as elaborate as possible <laughs> to my capabilities. Thank you. And I do thank you very much for your um, very profound uh, <laughs> presentation, if I may say. It was really, really great. Um, I totally concur um, with, the, with what you said, but also uh, literature uh, in a world that is so digitalized um, and so mediatized that it can still provide that um, sort of endless shades of gray in a world that is rather about um, that has become so black and white. Exactly and also um, it is very important to to distinguish um, and I have seen, this is a TED talk on YouTube, which I recommend to you. I will be sending, I think, the link later in the comment section, in the chat section, sorry. Um, it was about a professor of uh, literature saying that less and less students are choosing to study literature. And uh, upon being surveyed uh, with the question, do you find it easy to put yourself in other people's shoes? Um, so the non-literature, uh, non-humanist, um, profiles were surveyed and I was very surprised to find out that 80% of them uh, ticked the option that it was very hard for them to put themselves in other people's shoes and I think that's a huge problem and literature as I said offers a very straightforward solution to that. Yes. Thank you so much. Um... Yeah, so we have arrived um, at the Q&A session. We have roughly 10 minutes. Um, so if anyone has a question for Ferhat, Radu, Esther, um, or Haley, or potentially through Annabelle, but you can um, write IDP, um, feel free to um, unmute your, yourself, turn on your... Um, your camera or leave your camera off if you feel more comfortable and uh, yeah, go for it. I, I do have some questions if no one has, but go ahead. Also uh, guest speakers, if you have questions for your colleagues, please um, feel free.
No, then I will um, start the discussion. Um, I wonder actually for all of, I think actually for, for all guest speakers, um, I was having a discussion with my other colleague who is uh, here now, um, Ludmila, yesterday about how um, the world has become so obsessed with like um, checkbox productivity um, and how it leaves um, less time to really sort of ref reflect on, um, no, not reflect on, but it leaves less time for um, that very spontaneous engagement with other people and with also with yourself, uh, because I think people don't really allow themselves um, so much, um, or at least what I see of my generation, uh, they don't really allow themselves to um, uh, get lost in an, in an art project, for example, um, or get lost in a book for on, a, on an entire Saturday afternoon. So I would really like to know um, from any one of you, um, first of all, what do you think about this? Is my, is my assumption also right? Because it could be very incorrect. Um, and how can we find a way back? I, I do realize that um, I think we are in the generation of audience, you know, we like to uh, get, I'm sorry, my boys are awake, so you can hear them as background. So, so we like to prescribe things. So we like to have like ABC and then there's a result. And then we like to see things happen very quick. That's the, that's the result, you know, of modernity. And people are so, like you said, like, people are so obsessed with productivity and like, or look good, you know, have a, have a good life and earn good money. And, and like literature, music or art is actually inviting us to go into that messy place that is not productive, that it's just simply being, be that here and now, like what we have just experienced together, just in the medium and, and then do something and then find that contentment within ourselves that we have enough, we don't need to continue like wanting more. I think the earth is so messed up because of we humanity, we think that we don't have enough and then we need to power over other people, um, yeah, which is about today's topic, or to power over the earth. So that's, that's, um, that's a very um, crucial insight that you just brought in. So I do find reconnecting to the nature and using nature as as a, as a medium, that's why I just say like to help us to find our place, not only in human society, not only on Facebook, but our place in the in the earth, our our place in this beautiful universe, and then we can find the balance. That's that's my own response to that. Thank you very much, Esther. Just I feel like I want to add something, but Esther, I totally agree, and also I think because. Now we're living in a society so goal-oriented, um, which as you both of you said, it's really focused on productivity, but actually we forgot the process of doing something that we only see the result. And we forgot like actually a lot of things like the artwork that you see, the, the, the great business that you see like behind the scene, it's actually is long and hard and deep and hard work. And then we don't see that anymore because we have social media that is presented to us that we thought this person just like be famous and be popular like this in, within a second. But it's actually, it's a lot of them still work really hard to achieve that. Yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Thank you, Haley. Um, then I would like to specifically redirect this question to Farhat. Um, Farhat, do you think that this, um, discontentment can um is also part of a push factor towards more radical narratives and and ideas uh yeah i mean 
of of course it it uh, it, it, it can be yes uh, because I, we cannot say this cannot be a push factor or pull factor for radicalization or radicalization being being you know being affected by the rad radicalist narratives uh, so the there are many factors and we should just work very hard to explore the vulnerabilities and this is not only uh, a process uh, you know which can be achieved just one person or one department one organization this 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 should be like a, a you know uh, multi organizational uh, and cooperational work uh, we should be uh, we should have like provide very good cooperation uh, with i don't know governmental departments ngos and maybe individuals uh, who are doing great jobs like our presenters Esther and Haile, you know, uh, we, we should involve uh, many, many uh, different parts of the society in these kind of activities. Because we, we don't know, uh, something not important to us might be the most important thing in a child's world. And uh, I don't know, his or her idea can be changed just in a second and decide to you know to just engage in the radical narratives because uh it might be the point just the turning point like a tipping point uh and in, in his one sensitive uh, moment uh, we can just lose her or we can just win her it, it is just two-way uh you know traffic so i mean uh, it might be as you said it might be the reason for radicalization it can be one of the many 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 different types of factors of, of, of course i mean uh i just would like to share just one of my uh one experience during my law enforcement work uh i negotiated with a suicide bomber and at the end he just gave up uh, the button but and the, the reason that he told me was very important i mean he told you know for the first time someone asks for my good someone wanted for myself you know, not to care community, nobody wanted me, you know, to not to do, uh, not to ha harm other people, but, you know, not to harm myself. I mean, he, he told this, it was the reason he gave up. Uh, he, he wanted to feel, you know, valued. He wanted to uh, feel that importance as society, a person uh, gave them, gave him. And uh, he told me it was the reason, this, the respect and the value I gave him was the reason just giving up the button. So I, I don't know, this, this might not be very important. We can just turn our back and go our way. But for some people, uh, even some small respect might be important, a turning point in, in their lives. Thank you, Farhad. Um... Yeah, it seems that it's like in the most vulnerable of moments that 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 respect and that attention um, counts the most. Um, yeah, wow, that is a, a crazy story. Um, I have to round off. I'm not sure if anyone else has perhaps um, a, a last question or um, if any one of the guest speakers has a, a question for um, another guest speaker. Um, in the chat box. Yes, uh, Esther, she said, in um, sorry, Ferhat, how one's real presence can awaken other sense of self-respect. Um, I, I think there couldn't be a better story to actually prove that. Um, I think it's uh, underestimated these days that an, a small act of kindness can go hundreds of miles further um, than you might think, which is also why I'm very happy um, to have been part of the community project, but I'm deviating. Um, so if there are no further um, questions, there is a, if there are no further questions, then I would like um, to mention that there is, um, in the chat box, there is a form, um, it's a survey 
um, please um, fill the survey out so that we can do better next time. Um, I want to thank all of the guest speakers so, so very much for their time, energy um, that they put into being with us here today and for uh, all the preparation and um, yeah, and their final contributions.